I'm guessing you also want to get into Accenture as a technology graduate in the UK. Otherwise, why would you have clicked on this video? Well, let me share the process I had to go through from the beginning right up until I received an offer from Accenture. But let me clarify a few things. Did I know anyone inside the company beforehand? No. Did I do an internship at Accenture or a similar company beforehand? No. So as you can see, I did not have any helping hand when it came to getting into the company. So I think this video is gonna to matter to pretty much anyone who's applying to become a graduate in the technology area. The first step was probably by far the easiest of all the steps involved and I was simply applying online. So generally what you have to do is you have to fill out a form online and it's kind of like you're making your CV but you're just doing it through the specific form they have when you apply through the website. And if you want to see what sort of CV I put online, then check out this other video. I'll put a card to it at the top, but you can check that out after watching this one. In a really short way, what you really want to put on your CV style form filling out thingy me bob, you want to have your education, your experience, and just other stuff you've done that makes you appealing to Accenture. After I passed that CV phase, I was basically asked to do this online quiz sort of thing. I don't know if you call it a quiz. No, you wouldn't call it a quiz. It's more so like a set of questions online where you have to rank what you would do in a specific scenario in the workplace. So in this stage, you are gonna get asked the behavioral questions like I was saying, but then it will also be thrown in some arithmetic sort of style questions where you might get shown like a graph or something and it'd be like, work out the percentage difference or something like that. So really basic maths, nothing like, you know, implicit differentiation or like proof by induction. So nothing that complex, just very basic stuff. So then once I passed the stage, the next stage was the virtual assessment center. And because it was COVID times, it was virtual. I know people who have got onto the graduate scheme, did do it in person because they applied like a full year before me. But as it stands, I'm guessing they're still gonna carry on with the virtual assessment center. So this still applies. So the virtual assessment center was split into four parts. It was one will be the one-to-one -one interview. The second bit was the paired exercise. The third bit are the immersive challenges. And the fourth one was the Chen, ten, Chen? The 10 challenges problem. Okay, so within the one-to-one -one interviews, it's also split again into two parts. So one part is where the interviewer is asking you questions and you need to really listen and interpret what the question is saying and answer them. So it might be like, how would you describe yourself as being analytical or what, what would something being analytical to you mean? Um, something like that. Um, so it's really like strange questions where you have to interpret what they're saying. So it's not, not the type of questions where you could really prepare beforehand. So it's not going to be stuff like, where do you see yourself in five years time or, you know, something like that. So none of the basic stuff. So the second part to this was the technology showcase. So this is where you have to talk about your favorite piece of technology or some, which is specifically related to Accenture. So I'd suggest picking one of the technologies that are in the Accenture tech trends, um, because this shows that you've done your research and understand what the Accenture tech trends are. And the other thing you have to do is talk about how Accenture has used these technologies to help businesses that they are serving pretty much. So I chose AI because I thought AI is like really freaking cool. And I, in essence, talked about some of the projects that Accenture has done um, just by looking at the case studies on their website and explain to them, okay, look, this is what AI is. This is what I know about it. This is how Accenture uses it. And this is where I think it can add value to many businesses across the planet. But honestly, if you choose a technology that you are already passionate about, it's super easy to answer the questions because you're gonna know like 10 times more than the person interviewing you at that point. Because if you're really knowledgeable about the, the topic, then you're gonna do really well. And the interviewer, for me, was not a technical person. They were someone who works in HR rather than actually on the tech itself. But I think it's super important if you talk about something that you already know. So for example, if you are really passionate saying like blockchain or something, definitely go ahead and talk about that. Because the main thing is, is if you already know about the technology that you're going to be talking about, it's gonna be so much easier for you to talk about it in an authentic way. And you're already gonna have the information in your head. So you don't have to do like a ton of revision about, oh, I need to, Google, like, what, what is a uh, blockchain? How does it, how is it used and so on? Because you're already gonna know that, so happy day. Okay, so moving on to stage two of the assessment center, this was the paired exercise. So the paired exercise puts you and the other person into a simulated work environment, and then you have to sort of come up with a solution or the next step of what you're going to do after being immersed in, say, a fake meeting. And then you're asked questions by the recruiter or the interviewer, should I say, of 
what next steps you would take and you have to also discuss this with your partner and come up with the answers together and then deliver it to the person interviewing you. To be honest, I guess my advice for this is don't be a dick and don't throw your partner under the bus, um, but also remember to come up with your own ideas in the paired exercise and make sure you're not just sitting there and listening to your partner talk all the time, actually give input yourself and also try and build upon your partner's idea. So I guess instead of saying yes, but, and shutting them down, try and be like yes and and building upon their ideas and this shows a much better collaborative approach to solving the problem. Okay, so the next ones are the immersive challenges. So these are where you're sort of um, pretending to be working at Accenture and um, they give you some sort of thing saying like, oh, we need to prove to a client that we're really good in this sort of area. And then they give you like a little text box um, to fill in your answer. So you sort of have to, I guess, write maybe like a paragraph, few bullet points about like how you would go about doing something if you were to be working at Accenture. So I guess they're trying to just test you if you're, if you're really good at understanding how to interact with clients and so on because after all, Accenture is not just a technology company, it is also a consulting company, so you are going to be talking to clients as well as working on the tech yourself. So yeah, my advice for this stage of the assessment center would primarily be just read the question carefully and really understand what the question is asking you to you know, write about or explain or like the scenario actually just get like a good understanding of what's written there or sometimes it's an audio file so get a good understanding of what you heard in that audio file the last part of the assessment center is this special little special special 10 challenges thing where you have 10 minutes to complete 10 different challenges and then nothing related to technology or engineering or you know anything related to accenture to be honest it's just a series of 10 random challenges that you have to try and complete in the 10 minutes. And I guess the, the main thing with this is you, they're just seeing if you're able to pick up a task, complete it, move on as quick as you can. And if you are stuck, you have to then, I guess, sacrifice that task can't be done and you move on and try to complete as many challenges as you want or as you can, not as you want. I personally did not finish all 10 because I got hung up on one question. And I guess the main reason why I probably got the job in the end is because I explained what I would have done differently. And I also have a had a decent reflection on my attempt at the puzzles. I didn't say, yeah, I did great. I was like, oh my God, I messed up completely, but this is what I'd do differently. So I think it's just the way you handle it at the end um, might be beneficial because they don't judge you on being able to complete it, but then they, they see you like, okay, um, this is how they handled the, the things that went wrong and this is what they suggested they do differently and if they like like how you answer that question then I think that's a big plus. The last phase of the whole process of being recruited for Accenture as a graduate software engineer was a technical interview and this was through a phone so it wasn't like on Zoom, it wasn't a video call, it was just purely like a, an old-fashioned like phone call like you know on a phone. Um, and the interviewer was an actual technical engineer or should I say like a consultant at Accenture. So in this technical interview, I got questions related to programming languages and, you know, trying to get an understanding of how much I knew of programming technology in that sense. And um, the other area that they tested my knowledge on was the sort of software development life cycle. So understanding, you know, what is agile, what is waterfall um, and so on. So I guess those are the sort of areas where you need to sort of be you know, knowledgeable of um, before this technical interview. That's the full journey from applying online to then ultimately getting an offer at the end because that's what I ended up getting after the technical interview. So if you did learn something new from this channel, do consider subscribing and also giving this video a like as well. And if you are also applying for Accenture, just comment down below. I want to know who my future colleagues could be because that'd be pretty cool. And um, yeah, if you also want to know what kind of stuff I have been doing up to now at Accenture, do check this other video out I have over here. And in the meantime, enjoy life and uh, I'll see you in another video. Goodbye.